to look at how we can hash a plain text password and get the hash back and which we can then store into a database or something like that as well as how to compare a plain text password to a hash to see if a user has entered the correct password or not and I'm going to show you first um, the hash method and this is an asynchronous method and we're looking at the asynchronous method because um, hashing is very computationally expensive. Um, it's a very expensive algorithm. It takes a lot of power. So you want to make sure that you don't freeze up your system while um, the hashing is taking place. And you can just give a callback function on what to do when it's finished. So the way you do this is you'd say bcrypt.hash like this. And this is the asynchronous function. The first argument is the data or the plain text password to hash. And I have just have this input dog here. So I'm just going to put input here. And the second argument is the number of so the second argument can be two things. So I'm it can be the number of salt rounds or the salt itself. So I'm just gonna start with the salt rounds, which is this eight right here. And remember the salt rounds is the number of times you run the algorithm. And finally you have a callback function, and the callback function takes in an error, and the data this time in this case is the hash. So what we can then do is we can do with this hash whatever we want. So we can put this hash in a database, for example, but I'm just going to log the hash for now. And if you run this, we can see that the hash has been logged. Actually, you know what? I'm going to um, put um, a new line in here just so it's a bit more clear. And I'm going to do it here as well. Um, this isn't really necessary, but I just want to keep the formatting a bit cleaner. So if we run the, um, the the script now, we can see that we have the hash generated right here, and the hashing algorithm is here, and the number of salt rounds is here, and then we have the salt, which is somewhere here. And when you put the number of salt rounds in like this, and if you give a number here, bcrypt will generate the salt for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, this is probably a good approach because the salt is completely random in this case. And you have, finally, at the end, you have the hash right here, which is the salt and the um, input smushed together into a string. An alternative thing you can do here is you can actually use a bcrypt method to generate the salt, and you can use um, gen salt or gen salt sync. So I've just gone for the synchronous one here. And that will generate the salt for you. And instead of feeding the uh, hash method, the salt rounds, you can give the salt directly yourself. And if you run that, you can see that bcrypt generated the salt for us. And what it's also done is it's used that salt in this algorithm. So you can see the algorithm 2b is there. And then you have um, 0, 8. So b means, um, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It's just the name of the algorithm. You have the number of salt rounds. And you can see that this salt right here is also part of the bcrypt string. And finally, we have um, the hash right here at the very end, which is just all of this smushed together. So that's how you hash passwords and calculate a hash. The next thing we're going to look at is an asynchronous way to compare a plain text password to an actual to a hashed password to see if it matches. And the way you do that is say you say bcrypt.compare. And that's a method. And this is an asynchronous method again. And since we need access to the hash of this method, we want to make sure that we put this in the callback function that's generated by the hash method. And if you look at the arguments for this, the first argument is the data that you want to compare. So that's um, basically the input dog right here. And the second argument to this is the actual hash you're comparing against. And that's the hash that we generated right here. So we can put hash here. And the final argument is a callback function that takes in an error and a result. And the result will be a Boolean. And it's true if um, this hash is a valid hash for this input, or if, if this input is a valid for this hash. And it returns false if that's not the case. And we can use this Boolean to determine whether to authenticate a user or not. But I'm just going to log the Boolean for now. So I'm going to say console.log uh, result is, and then put the result in like this. And then I'm just going to do a new line here. So if we run this now, we can see that, oops, just going to tidy that up a bit. We can see that um, the result is true. And what this compare method did was um, it looked at this input password and it, it also took, it, it can see, remember that the first um, 22 characters in the hash, so it looked at this hash and it grabbed the salt out of this 
and it grabbed the number of sold Torons from this. And what it did was it did the hashing algorithm with our plain text password with this input right here. And it's basically just determined whether it matches this hash that was generated right here. And if that's the case, it will return true. And the way we can test if this works is if I change the um, input to something like, um, let's say cat instead of dog, and then I run this, we can see that the result is false because um, for this specific salt, which is this right here, and this number of salt rounds, and then this input cat, um, the hash did not turn out to be this. So that's why it's returned false. So that's the two ways that you can, um, that's the way that you can hash using the hash method or compare using the compare method. That's all we're going to be implementing in this challenge. So what they want us to do here is, firstly, they want us to hash um, this, my plain text password with um, this number of salt rounds. We're not generating the salt this time, we're just giving the number of salt rounds and bcrypt is gonna do it for us. So we, would ju we just wanna do bcrypt dot hash. And the first argument is the uh, input, which is the my plain text password. The second argument is the number of salt rounds, which they've created also for us as salt rounds. And the third argument is the callback function. And the callback function takes in an error and the hash. But make sure you use the same variable names that they used here because these, this code is marked line by line. So you just want to make sure you take in the error and the hash. And for now, just console log the hash because we're not going to save it to a database or anything. So that's how you've generated the hash. And the second thing they want us to do is use the compare method to compare this plain text input with this hash that was generated right here. So in, remember, since we need access to the hash, we have to do it inside the callback function. So you just say bcrypt.compare. And uh, the first argument is the plain text password. So I'm just gonna say my plain text password like this. And the second argument is the hash that was generated right here. And the third argument is a callback function that takes in an error and the result. And I think they've gone with ERR and REST, so you make sure you use the same variable names like that. And what I'm just going to do here is just do console.log result like this. And um, I'm going to go into the logs and then clear it and then just make a minor change so that it runs the algorithm. Oops, that should be um, REST. So again, clear that. And you can see that the hash is generated right here and it's evaluated to be true. And if I were to change this to something like, if I were to change it to this one, the some other plain text password, and I paste that in, and then I clear this, and if it runs the code again, you can see that it comes up with false. So that's how we know that this testing is working. And that should be everything you need to do for this challenge. So you can go ahead and um, click share and then live app and then copy this and you can go ahead and paste it into here. And you can see that the tests have passed. Um, so again, what this did was it it um, hashed, it ran the bcrypt hashing with this plain text password and this number of salt runs, and that would generate a salt automatically. Then um, it has this callback function, which takes in an error and the hash. And what we've just done is we've used that same hash in the compare method to compare this plain text password. And that returns a result, which is true or false. And since the passwords are the same, it's returned true and we've just locked that. So that's everything you need to do. And we've just learned how to use asynchronous methods to um, hash and compare a password. And you can go ahead and submit that and move on.